we have positioned ourselves for the worst sort of pain. When it is right for France, should you agree, I will be by your side, fully committed. Until then, you can spend your time with others. I have to accept that. Someone needs to take control of things between us. I can do it. I can keep my distance. Even if it means releasing you to another. Anyone. But not my brother. Remember that time Poison Ivy nearly smothered us in those vines with the really sharp thorns? Yes. This is worse. Typical, you start filming again, your eyes start watering. Give me a sec, I just need to sort my eye out. It's watering for some reason. That's better. I think I'm just, uh, the hay fever's getting to me. Last few days have been so awful in terms of uh, rain and pollen and all that. Uh, it gets really hot when it's not raining, and then when it rains, the pollen stirs up, and I feel like my brain's melted because my sinuses hurt like hell. Ugh. You gotta believe I made, I took a lot of painkillers this morning. Well, not too much that was dangerous, but I needed the painkillers so badly this morning. Anyway, we're on episode six. Episode six of Rain. And the episode is called Chosen. And I just thought, if this was Buffy the Vampire Slayer, we'd be on the last episode by now. <laughs> so Chosen refers to quite a few things. So we have um, Kenna, being officially chosen as the king's mistress, sort of. I mean, so he's, she's sort of the king's mistress, but of course, the uh, King Henri is still going to be seeing Diane. He's just going to be doing it in a different room than his. And he gives in to all of uh, Kenna's demands. The pagan Hydra agents that worship the Chupacabra in the Bloodwood right next to the royal family residence choose Mary to be the sacrifice that Bassi has to present to the pagans to make up for the fact that he took a sacrifice that wasn't completed in the last episode. And there's another chosen where uh, Bassi goes and chooses someone to sacrifice. Now he has to choose someone and there's a whole switcheroo about that. Uh, my phone just buzzed. What's up? What's this? The Queen is under medical supervision at Balmoral after doctors became concerned for her health, says Buckingham Palace. Oh shit, is, am I going to be, um, am I going to be announcing the death of the Queen on this vlog? Yeah, Bassi chooses someone to sacrifice and there's a bit of a switcheroo around that. And uh, also Francois is choosing between Mary and Olivia in regards to his passions. So we'll start off with the Kenner situation. Uh, the King is returning to the castle. Again, we don't actually know what the place is called. It's just called the castle. And Kenner is eagerly awaiting to be announced the King, the, the next mistress of the King. She is certain that the, that Henri went to Paris to end things with Diana and choose her. Then he arrives and Diane de Poitiers is with him. And I was just like, oh, I knew this was all going to end in tears for her. But she goes and confronts him about it, and he says that she is that he has sort of ended things, but he's but she's going to be staying at the at the castle while they renovate somewhere on the grounds called the cottage. It's a, it's a place of sort of retirement for her, and still Kenno's like not convinced. She's telling the others that she's going to be the king's mistress. They're, they're very skeptical about it as well. And basically telling her not to get her hopes up about anything and even Susan points out that Henry and Diana's initials are entwined in the bedroom of which the king sleeps and she's like their love is literally written in stone and Kenner starts making demands and like saying I, I want those tiles taken up and the king appeases her he spells her name out in fireworks and he has the tiles removed but he's not very happy about getting the tiles removed because it means he can't even sleep in his own room while the workmen are, uh, are underway and he goes and stays in Diane's room. So uh, Francois is still angry that 
Bassie and Mary were kissing and it's one of those bloody things where there's been a misunderstanding but he won't talk to her about it and it's drawn out for as long as possible and Mary's like trying to figure out what have I done wrong and Bassie's like what's my brother such a dick and it's just like why won't you just talk sit down and talk to each other for goodness sake obviously I feel you know, it was just drawn out for the for the drama of the, the story. And so Mary wakes up and she finds the pagan necklace in her room and she ends up getting a little allergic reaction to it because it was like laced with something. And when she shows it to Bassie thinking it was a present from him, he's like, oh shit, it's like they've chosen her to be the sacrifice. And then I was just thinking like, well, why don't you just uh, grab a criminal from the dungeons and basically choose like the worst criminal you got in there. Choose a, 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 choose a um, a murderer or something and t he appears to take my advice and all this and he he's in the dungeon but he chooses a thief someone who just stole some money while he was serving in the army and that's a bit like ugh, surely there was someone else you could have chosen you could have gone to another prison and, and chosen someone so we also learn that um bassie's mother diane it was um a pagan worshipper when she was younger and Bassie knows a lot of the uh, pagan rituals and the prayers, but they want to keep that secret, otherwise they'll uh, be burned alive. So the longer uh, Bassie draws out choosing someone to sacrifice, the more Mary is in danger. And at some point Mary wakes up and she has a bloody deer head above her, uh, above her headboard, like hanging from the canopy. And I was just like saying, oh, she got godfathered. And it turns out she was drugged in order for them to actually put that in there without waking her up. We've, we later find out her maid, Sarah, is a, also a pagan and, and uh, drugged Mary. Of course, she is very traumatised about it and Francois is like, we, we need to find out what's going on. And Catherine de' Medici herself is even surprised and she's like, how on earth did this get inside my castle? And she and Mary decide to work together to find out who the infiltrator, who the pagan infiltrators are. They bring all the servants up into the throne room and Mary tells everyone that we need you to come forward and tell us who has been acting suspiciously and means harm to myself and the royal family and she is trying to be very calm about it saying look no one is in trouble I'll be very nice to you but the servants don't speak up so Catherine go so Catherine de Medici does what Catherine de Medici does best and she threatens she gets up and she says if no one comes to confess by midnight I shall have my men go to your hometowns and your houses shall be burned to the ground none of you has stepped forward that must mean that none of you knows anything Except that isn't possible, is it? Let me explain why we will have an answer. People are questioning whether they're safe in this castle. My home. That means they're questioning me. And everyone in this room. One of you knows who did this, and they will come forward by midnight. If not, I will send my guards to your villages and burn each of your homes to the ground. And this works because a servant then comes comes to her at the last minute and she confesses there's a guard that is a pagan. There is a good bit where um, Catherine is trying to like get her to fess up and she says, look, contrary to what people might believe, I don't actually want to burn people's homes to the ground. Oh my God, I love Megan Follows. <laughs> she's, she's amazing. There's huge uh, gray, grey morality in uh, how Catherine is presented and yeah they find the they fi they get the guard uh, off screen you don't find out how they get the guard and Sarah accidentally reveals herself by showing that she has the stag mark on her hand and just as um, Sarah is about to attack Mary for finding out Mary calls for the guards the guards grab um, Sarah and the two of them are burned alive in the castle grounds and I just thought okay it's one thing to burn them alive but shouldn't you be doing that in front of a crowd I'm guessing because season one budget they couldn't afford a crowd but they should have filmed that scene with like like outside the gates Mary and the others can see still see what's happening because that's the whole point of public executions it's to set an example um it was still very much a thing in the Tudor 16th century renaissance period 
I thought they moved past their medieval roots but they were still very much bloodthirsty. And Mary asked for mercy for Sarah so she gets an arrow in her chest. Ugh. Although you literally you hear the you hear her screaming and there's like a twang and then the girls are like oh you asked for an arrow to be shot into her so she wouldn't suffer whereas the guard suffers a lot. They don't do anything to the guard. Mary you can't watch this. I begged them to offer her the mercy of a quick death before they put her on the pyre. They put an arrow in her then. Yes, so Bassi decides to choose a criminal to be taken to the Bloodwood for sacrifice and he draws out the whole thing by making the man tie up his own legs and points a crossbow at him to make him do it and, and even ties him up and then the pagan shows up to see what he's doing and Bassi says I have to choose someone anyone and he says choose a life and the debt will be cleared and he says fine I choose you and then he throws a pokeball and then Charizard comes out and it sets the pagan on fire I wish that had happened <laughs> appointment. I get my flu jab on the 8th of October. Yeah I can do that. I'll do that after I've finished filming this. I have to get a flu jab because I'm asthmatic. But it turns out this was all the ruse to draw the pagan in and it's like take your revenge like how dare you threaten the woman I love and then he kills the pagan and then the debt is settled and he's about to let the patsy go but then the patsy reveals that he knows who Sebastian is. So Bassy literally gives him a kick and then knocks him off his horse and he falls off a cliff. And so Bassi has been forced to take not one life but two lives to defend Mary and Francois is not very happy about that and then eventually he confronts the two of them after Bassi comes back and reveals that he's sorted everything out and Francois says we will get married eventually but until you're married I don't really want to be near you at the moment and you can do whatever you want but you can't have my brother and then he goes up to Olivia's room and starts making out with her and they start sleeping together. There are other things to note in the story in the in this episode such as Ailey is wearing a dress that very clearly looks more Regency than any other time period. A lot of the cuts of these dresses look a lot like um, they come from more Regency background or um, if they've even got like, the, the, even if the waistline is actually at the waist it looks more Georgian and of course the fight scene between Bassi and the pagan in the woods it's another shoddily done fight scene that they, they do cuts every two seconds to make it look like they're fighting but really it's just like Torrance Coombs and this guy aren't actually trained to do this fight scene so yeah you can tell when a fight scene is uh, badly done when they keep cutting because if they were doing it well they wouldn't cut so much they would have like wide out show them moving around going vroom, 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 vroom. eventually I'm gonna get myself a lightsaber just to show off I really really have been spoiled by watching um, lightsaber battles in Star Wars everything comes back to Star Wars on this channel but hey you know Laughing Cavalier can have anime I can have Star Wars that's how it works eventually I am going to get myself a lightsaber Be very useful if they're at Black House this winter who, who was the worst dress it was a tie it was a tie it's a tie between Susan's horrible pink meringue skirt that you see her wearing when Kenna announces she's the king's mistress and later again during the fireworks scene and Kenna's blue fish scale dress it's sewn in this way it looks like fish scales and it's just like are you about to sing part of my world I was initially going to give it to Susan's pink meringue skirt because I just saw how ruffled it was and all of a sudden I was thinking about that scene in Four Weddings and a Funeral where Scarlett's like oh she looks beautiful and Kristen Scott Thomas is like Scarlett you're blind she looks like a giant meringue oh isn't she lovely Scarlett you're blind she looks like a big meringue it's a pink meringue she's wearing a it's a strawberry meringue Susan is a strawberry meringue and the Kenner's fish scale dress it just it look it looks like something I saw in River Island a few months ago 
do you know how expensive that dress must be to make in that time when they don't have like machine sewing and all that all those beads oh. there is one of the four Marys that doesn't ever make the worst dress category um, you'll find out soon enough so that's episode six of rain it was it felt it sort of felt like filler setting up stuff that is just like the, the main thing it set up was uh, Olivia becoming Francis, Francois' mistress uh, but that only lasts for like an episode and then you'll see what happens in the next episode <laughs> everything's gonna be fine but some of the Kenna stuff does obviously it's very important in the next episode and Catherine de' Medici showing that she can put her differences with Mary aside and actually work with her to accomplish certain plans and she's very intelligent and she knows poisons that's going to come up in the next episode because like she literally just smells the the cup that mary drank from the previous night and she's like poppy that's poppy it's kept and it's like i i know my stuff yeah i just i could just could have done without all the melodrama around mary and francois because i know they're just drawing the drawing this out just to have a conflict to fill the space and, until they actually do get married with later on in the season so the next episode is called Left Behind, but there will no it will it has nothing to do with Jonathan Groff or Spring Awakening. So thank you for watching and we'll moving on the next episode is my favourite episode so far because it's just so fucking cool. And thank you to my patrons who've been watching this. Like the first eleven episodes are on Patreon right now. How so if you want to see my thoughts on episode seven, Left Behind, then uh, head on over and become a duke and duchess or king and queen patron because they're the ones that get early access to videos and thank you to my king and queen patrons alison cuff larissa lady eternal leslie williams jill my thank you so much and make sure you subscribe so you don't miss the next vlog that comes up next week